This is a demonstration of a basic hearing evaluation. The first thing you do in a hearing evaluation is get a case history from the patient. During your case history, you build a rapport with your patient by um, getting to know them and asking them some questions about their personal history um, in regards to their hearing. So, how's your hearing? It's pretty good. My right ear's fine, but my left ear's been bothering me a little bit lately. How has it been bothering you? Um, it kind of hurts a little bit over the past week. It feels really full, but I kind of have a cold right now. Okay. Have you ever had any ear infections before? Yeah, I get them all the time about this time of year. Okay. Is it usually in the left ear or does it happen in the right ear too? It alternates both ears. Okay. Um, do you tell your doctor about these ear infections? Yeah, normally he puts me on an antibiotic or something for them, but I haven't been this time yet. Okay. Um, have you ever had any holes in your eardrums or surgeries on your ears, um, such as tubes? No. Okay. Um, do you have any problems with ringing or buzzing in your ears? No. Do you have any problems with dizziness or imbalance? No. Um, do you have any family history of deafness? No. Okay. Um, have you ever been exposed to any loud noises? No, not really. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do now is start the test, and the first thing that I'm going to do is take a look in your ears, okay? Let me know if you have any pain or tenderness while I'm um, taking a look, okay? The next test that I'm going to do is called tympanometry. Um, it's a test that assesses how your, middle, how your middle ear is functioning and how your eardrum is moving. You don't have to do anything for this test, you just have to sit still and quiet for me, okay? It kind of feels like you're going up over a mountain, there'll be some pressure in your ear. Same thing on the other side. So we're finished with the parts of the test that happen out here. So now we're going to head into the booth and finish our testing in there, okay? You can have a seat right here. This is the soundproof booth where we um, conduct the testing. There are four different kinds of transducers. The first one is sound field, and that is um, the, the stimuli comes through speakers um, in the room. Another transducer is the headphones and this is for air conduction testing um, red goes on the right and blue goes on the left ear okay um, another air conduction testing is inserts these are the inserts again blue is left and red is right and they have special tips that go on them they look like this. So you just put this on. They're individual use tips that you roll down and then insert into the patient's ear. The last transducer is the bone oscillator. It's a headband 
Um, this is the part that uh, goes against the mastoid bone of the patient. And there's some slight tension in this headband in order to keep the oscillator on the patient's head and to couple with the patient's mastoid bone so that there's a good, a good um, seal um, between the oscillator and the mastoid bone. So this will vibrate and produce uh, skull vibrations that stimulate the cochlea. <clears throat> Once you get into the, into the booth and you have your patient seated, you instruct the patient on what they have to do for the test. Um, so what I'm going to have you do is listen to some beeps. They're going to be very quiet beeps, so I want you to just click the button when you hear it. Here's the response button for you, so just click that button whenever you hear those beeps, okay? Um, this is a diagnostic audiometer. This is called a GSI 61 audiometer. Um, it's a two-channel audiometer. There are different stimuli, different transducers. Um, the different stimuli are the tone or the mic and um, some external sources such as computers or CD players. The four different transducers that we have are headphones, the bone oscillator, the sound field, and inserts. And then this is where you select left or right ear. This knob controls the decibels and um, these buttons change the frequencies. And this button presents the tone. Um, I'm going to start testing at a thousand hertz. And the way that I do that, um, the patient has headphones on so I select phone tone <clears throat> and I make sure that it's set at a thousand hertz. So what I'm going to do is start with a better ear and she said that her left ear was bothering her so we're going to start with a right ear. Uh, I'm going to instruct her to press the button when she hears the beeps and uh, depending on her response that tells me where I will present next. <clears throat> okay we're going to get started now. Um, all you have to do is uh, press the button when you hear the beep, okay? Okay. She's young, so I'm going to start um, nice and low where I think below where her threshold is. So I present the tone. She didn't respond, so I go up five decibels and I present again. And she did respond. <clears throat> So I'd go down 10. I present again. I go up five until she hears it. And she did respond. So I'll do that one more time. And she responded. So her threshold at 1000 hertz would be zero dBHL. Um, you do the same thing to present for uh, each frequency. So after this, you'd go to 2,000 hertz, and then 4,000, and then 8,000, and then 250, and then 500 hertz. And then you do the same thing on the left ear. You also use the same down 10, up 5 method for bone conduction. But the only frequencies tested for bone conduction are 500, 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000. Um, once we're finished with pure tone audiometry, we move on to speech audiometry and to word recognition. Um, and the way that you do this is you test 40 decibels above the pure tone average. And the pure tone average for her right ear is 5 decibels. Um, you, to find the pure tone average, you take the average of the thresholds at 500, 1000, and 2000 hertz. Her pure tone average in her left ear is 30 decibels. 
So if we, um, if we start with the right ear and take 40 above her five decibel pure tone average, we're gonna start at 45 decibels. And that's where we're gonna present um, the list of words. Uh, there are several different lists of, of words, but um, we are gonna use the NU6 words and uh, their spondees are two syllable words. Um, you instruct the patient to say, to, to tell her what to do. Um, I'll do that right now and then we'll begin testing. Okay, we're gonna move on to um, having you listen to some sentences, okay? Okay. Um, you'll hear a woman's voice say something like, say the word ball. So all you have to do is repeat that last word. You would just say ball, okay? Okay. And to set this up, we're gonna use the external um, source, the CD player. So we select that. We have the headphones and make sure we're gonna test the right ear first. We set it at 45 decibels. And you select the appropriate track and then you begin testing. Say the word love. Love. Say the word sure. Sure. Say the word knock. Knock. Say the word choice. Choice. Okay, you present um, a 25 word list to each ear and then you take uh, the correct percentage out of 100 and that's your word recognition scores. I'm gonna have you listen to some beeps again, but this time I'm gonna put the headband on you, okay? And just repeat, just hit the button like you were with the beeps before, okay? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So now that we're finished with the testing, I'm gonna explain all the results that we found. Okay, this picture right here is called an audiogram. Um, it kind of gives us a picture of your hearing levels. These numbers across the top are the frequencies or pitches. So we have low pitches going up to high pitches. And then these numbers on the side are decibels or, or volume. So we have soft sounds down to loud sounds. We say anything from about here up is normal hearing. It's about 25 decibels or better. So the red circles are your right ear and the blue X's are your left ear. And you can see that in your right ear you have normal hearing. All those points are above within the normal range. And for your left ear we have this mild to moderate loss. And um, your bone conduction scores, those are from when I put the um, headband on those scores are within the normal range. So because those are in the normal range and um, using the headphones was having that loss, this is called a conductive loss. And <clears throat> that basically tells us that the problem is either in your outer or your middle ear. And I can show you what that means on this small model that I have of the ear. Um, in the test that we took where we put some pressure in your ear, um, your right ear was normal with that test and your left ear had a, a what we call a flat temp and um, that's most likely caused by uh, a problem in your middle ear um, because that's what that test is um, assessing. So. Um, it's more than likely caused by a fluid buildup in your middle ear, causing your eardrum to become stiff and not moving. Uh, 
So in this model, you can see that the sound has to go through your ear canal and then your eardrum through the middle ear and into the inner ear right here. Uh, this is where the problem is with, with your left ear because um, the bone conduction scores bypassed all of this and went straight to the cochlea and directly stimulated your inner ear. Um, so we know that the problem occurs out here somewhere. And through um, otoscopy, when I looked in your ears, it was clear in the external ear. So the problem's here, and um, it's most likely caused by a fluid, uh, like an ear infection, that you have experienced some of those before. So because of this uh, middle ear problem, the problem's occurring right here, and that's usually treatable medically. So what I'll do is refer you to um, an ear, nose, and throat doctor so that they can look at that and uh, hopefully get that cleared up for you, okay? Um, these are the results from the tympanometry test that we did, the test where I put some pressure in your ears. Um, this tympanogram is corresponding with your right ear, and this is a, what we call a type A temp, and this is normal. You have a normal ear canal volume of 1.0 cubic centimeters. Normal peak pressure is at 0 0.5 cubic centimeters. And the pressure is zero decapascals. All those um, numbers are within the normal range. And this tympanogram over here is what we got for your left ear. And um, you can see the flat line across the bottom. This is called a flat temp or type B temp. And um, you have normal ear canal volume, which is 1.0 cubic centimeters for you, um, but there's no peak and there's no pressure. So this is most likely um, corresponding with um, a problem in your middle ear, such as fluid causing the eardrum to be stiffened and not move. So that's why we don't have that uh, peak pressure uh, in there. Um, do you have any questions about anything that we've talked about today? Any of the results that we found? No. Okay.